Do you want to see in the dark like a superhero? TNVC.com is your source for the finest night vision devices and accessories to make you the bump in the night. Hey there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. Today on Tundra Tactical, we're going to be taking a look at some of the munitions being left on the ground in Ukraine. That's right, folks. This video is all mine. <laughs> you see what I did there? Hey, you'll have to stick around to the end of the video because you are not going to believe some of the way these Ukrainians are clearing out these things. So sit back, get out that metal detector, and let's start the show. First up, we have the Estonian PK-14 Directional Anti-Tank Mine. These have the ability of putting speed holes in most lightly armored vehicles, and the penetrating shape charge on these is capable of kneecapping you and your vehicle from up to 50 meters away. This mine looks different than many of the other mines you might be used to, seeing as that it stands on a tripod and is aimed to enter the target from both sides, but not in the way that your mother likes. Packing over three and a quarter pounds of PBX explosives, the PK-14 packs a pretty solid punch in a fairly small package. The major downside to these is that they're manually detonated with a shock tube. These things are like claymores, folks, but instead of being used for the infantry, the PK-14 is used for infantry fighting vehicles. But hey, <laughs> if you're gonna loot your kills, you might as well be close to it before the locals get all the good stuff, am I right? By the way, for the YouTube employee that'll inevitably review this video, hello there! I hope you're having an interesting day working in YouTube land. My name's Tyler, and I'm an Air Force veteran, and yes, my writers did have to convince me to admit that in public. Mother of God. I just so happened to have worked on loading and unloading explosive ordnance and other things that went pew pew and boom boom. Now, I'm not saying I'm an expert on the topic, but hey, I might just know a thing or two more than the average rube. So here's the deal. I'll give you a crisp high five if you don't demonetize this video. Trust me, all this RGB ain't cheap, bud. Another anti-tank mine being utilized is the HPD 2A2, which is made by France? All right, well, I guess it makes sense that a country that's best known for dropping munitions behind them makes some of the most effective anti-tank mines. Now, these are your typical bury under the roadway mines, and the magnetic field of tanks passing near them or over them is supposed to set off the mine. Although reports of smaller vehicles and sometimes even small pieces of metal passing a little bit too close is said to have set them off as well, and woof, that is a bad day for Pavel with the plate in his head. This lends credence to the claim that these particular types of mines can be set off with a metal detector, and if that's the case, then the HPD-2s are in kindred spirits with America and aren't compliant with the Geneva suggestions. I'm not sure I want to be carrying one of these things around in my backpack if they're known to go off with a change in the magnetic field from metal coming too close. Much like the Estonian PK-14, this German DM-22 anti-tank mine is what's known as an off-route mine. These mines are designed to be hidden off the main route and strike from a distance. They can be remotely detonated and set off with trip wires or pressure pads. The German DM-22 consists of two parts, a firing mechanism, and a heat warhead that is effective from up to 40 meters away. This is basically like the traps from Vietnam where you'd step on a wire and a tree would come swinging at you, but instead of the tree, you have a mini RPG that's anxious to introduce itself to you by burning through the metal hull of your tank. Now, I think the Germans might have just gotten a little bit too loopy after watching Return of the Jedi, but that's just me. And if that wasn't enough, these things are usually used in conjunction with the DM-31 conventional anti-tank mines. So enjoy wondering if one of those bad boys is about to go off next. Ukraine was sent 1,600 DM-22 off-route mines and 3,000 DM-31s to complement them. I'm starting to wonder if these things were made by the Ronco company because they really do epitomize the set it and forget it mentality. If you're old enough to get that reference, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like the video. At your age, it wouldn't hurt to more, to more a no few enough people. Yeah, I think I smell toast. If you're old enough to get that reference, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like the video. At your age, it wouldn't hurt to know a few more people that also had blockbuster video cards. Okay, boomer. Covering the other side of the conflict, the Russians have deployed anti-tank mines as well, most notably the PTKM-1R, God bless it, these names. 
This is also an off-road option to deal with passing vehicles, but works much differently than the other mines that we talked about so far. This mine is very advanced in the way that it detects vehicles and strikes them. It uses sensors to measure acoustics and seismic vibrations to launch then a submunition up over the target where it detects motion on the ground using radar and infrared sensors. Then it detonates forming a penetrator that attacks from the top down. Basically, it's the communist way of making convertibles. And that right there, folks, is the reason communist convertibles always suck. The top of the vehicle is almost always the most vulnerable to an attack, which makes these mines even more lethal. They were first spotted in Ukraine back in April of last year, but unfortunately, there's no footage of them actually being used in action. But just like many things when it comes to Russia, it might just be a promise of something good. D14 Armada. <clears throat> that really isn't nearly as effective as it's made out to be. Do these things actually work, or is it just another failed attempt like the AK-12 was at showing the world the Russians are more technologically advanced than they really are? SU-57. Man, whew, that cough should be a felony. Another mine deployed by the Russians is the PFM-1. The PFM-1 is an anti-infantry high-explosive mine, the first on our list today, but trust me, there are plenty more. This little guy is more commonly known by its name it acquired during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, the Butterfly Mine. Now, calling these things Butterfly Mines is a bit like calling nuclear explosions tanning weather, but I digress. Interestingly enough, the PFM-1 is also called the Green Parrot because of its shape and color. Now, the mine can be scattered through the air and it glides to the ground without exploding until it's touched. It contains a liquid explosive that can cause severe injuries. The mine has been widely criticized as indiscriminate and inhumane as well. This is not your typical parrot either, folks. The PFM-1 is also difficult to detect and clear because of its plastic body and lightweight. When they're found, many Ukrainian soldiers, in a straight-up E4 Mafia power move, use some unconventional ways to clear the mines from roads and towns. Well, that's all the time we have for you today, folks. If you want firearms news from here in the U.S. of A, then make sure to check out our good friends over at ARFCOM, your source for the finest two-way propaganda. And don't forget to join us next time when we still don't know what the heck we're doing. Bye-bye.